Chill, Jose Wanagadawa. My name is Chuji Kingfisher. We're here once again as we climb back into the Halloween season, that spooky time of year. And I've been asked once again to bring a story, whether it's a scary story or not, that's up to you. During my childhood, during my younger days, I would go spook hunting and I've seen many things in my lifetime. I've seen a ghost woman in a tree at a cemetery. I've seen some hairy little creature crossing the road, disappearing into a house that was not there on the hillside. I saw huge, huge, I guess, lack of a better word, monsters. I've seen all these things, whether you believe me or, or not, doesn't matter because I saw them, they were there. But during my journeys, oftentimes I was told of this place or that place and I would go and visit. I've been to Cry Baby Bridge, I've been to several of them and I've heard those babies cry. I've heard those children cry out. I've been to places where I've heard mothers cry for their children. I've been to places where hmm, I've heard dishes moving around in old cook shacks and you could hear them talking in our Cherokee language and that cook shack is no longer in use. I've heard a lot of things. But it seemed like the scariest things always took place around churches. There was this one church that I was told about that just piqued my curiosity. And oftentimes I would say, I'm going to go and visit that church. I, I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to go and do this. But you see, it's one of those things that you don't ever just go and do. Things have to be right. You have to be right. The night has to be right, the time has to be right. Everything has to be right in order for it to work. And it seemed on that night, all that was in order as I pulled up to that church. I sat there by my car for a moment, looking at the new church building. I'd attended church there many times with my Grandpa, my grandma, behind that old church, there was the old cemetery that many even today have forgotten that it's even there, but there, that's where many of my relatives are buried. And there to the side of the new church, there's an old foundation of that old, old church. I leaned up next to my car, studying all of this and wondering if I was going to do what I was told. You see, I was told that if you walk up to that church, the old church, that you can step on that step and step up onto that platform and reach your hand out and grab that doorknob and turn it. The teller of that tale said that's as far as he had ever gotten. He said, son, I don't ever know if you can actually open that door. He said, because I was too afraid to push it open. He said, maybe you're the one. Oh, that was years ago that I was told that. And I sat there that night watching. In the background, I could hear the thunder, I could see the lightning flash across the sky. Why was it always like that? <laughs> Why did scary things always have to happen when thunder rolled and lightning flashed? But there it was, my sign for me to move forward. So I began to pray. As I began to step forward, 
walking towards the foundation of that old church. You see, I had come with someone and my driver. They told me later that as I was walking up to that church, that a fog began to roll in. I never noticed the fog. But as I stood there on that step, I turned around to look at them. And I smiled. I gave them a thumbs up to let them know I was going to do it. Smiled and I waved and turned my attention back to the step. In my mind, I had to see that step. In my mind, I had to see that church. And I raised my foot and I stepped. And my foot stepped on a step. <laughs> I was freaking out. There was nothing there, but my foot was stepping on a step. The rush of adrenaline that went through my body was unexplainable. I can't tell you the feelings that I had, but in my mind, there was only one thing, step again. And so I put all my weight on the foot that was on the step and I raised up and I took another step and I stepped onto the platform. I was doing this. I was actually doing this. I began to see the church in my mind. As I took a couple more steps, my mind could see the doorknob, but my eye couldn't. And so I closed my eyes and I let my mind take over. I reached my hand out and I grabbed that doorknob. That was the weirdest feeling I had ever had. To reach out and grab something that wasn't there. To know that those things actually exist. So I summed up all the courage that I had. And I turned that doorknob just like those doorknobs that used to be on my grandpa's house, just like those doorknobs that used to be on all those churches that I used to run around at, it began to squeak and I began to smile. What was I going to do? My heart was racing so fast. What was I going to do? And then without thinking anymore, I pushed that door open just a little bit and a flood of light began to come out. I was in awe as I could hear on the other side voices voices that I had not heard since I was a child. What was I going to do? I pushed that door open just a little bit more. And I could see the corner of a pew. I could see someone's shoulder and I could hear an old song being sung. Oh, my heart was happy. I wanted so bad to rush in, not only to sing with them, but to hug them, to tell them I was there, to let them know I was all right. It was no longer about 
being a dare, it was no longer about it being real or not because it was real. But what was I going to do with it? I pushed the door open a third time. And I could see the back of someone's head. I could see someone walking around. I could hear the voices speaking. And I begin to wonder to myself, what will happen if I walk in? Will I be able to come back out? If I walk in, is this it? Is this my crossing? Many things ran through my head that shouldn't be running through a young man's head. But there I stood in the middle of nowhere, holding on to nothing, trying to figure out everything. I could hear the voices. I could hear the voices. I could hear the voices. And it was driving me crazy because I wanted to be there with them. I wanted to feel their touch again. And I slammed the door shut. I jumped off of that platform. And when I hit the ground, I began to roll. My partner, <laughs> When he saw me hit the ground, he jumped in the front seat and he started the car and he took off and he was driving down the driveway. I had to chase him and I jumped in the passenger side window as he was driving away. Later on, I asked him, I said, why did you, why did you take off with that weight on me? He said, whenever you hit the ground, he said, you scared me. He said, I thought you was a skilly coming to get me. We talked about that night. He said, when you waved at me, he said, I saw you. He said, I saw you raise that foot up. He said, and then when you put that foot down, he said, you disappeared. He said, brother, you was gone for four hours. To me, I was gone maybe 15 minutes. For those listening, I don't know if I'll ever get a chance like that again. I don't know if everything will ever line up for me like that again, that I can go and I can turn that doorknob. Because I can guarantee you now, if I had a chance to turn that doorknob and walk in, Without a doubt, I would walk in and not come back. But maybe there's somebody out there, somewhere, that has heard this story as well. And maybe you know hmm, where that old foundation is. And maybe your heart and your spirit are right. And maybe the day is right and the time is right that you too can reach out and grab that doorknob. But what are you going to do? At least that's how it happened to me.